On today's episode of Survival Dispatch DIY, we're going to convert this Vietnam era ammo can into a Faraday cage. We got this uh, good sized ammo can from a flea market for five bucks. It is nine inches by 18 inches by 15 inches deep. So plenty of room uh, to store electronic devices. However, since Faraday cages have to have conductivity, meaning no gaps in how electrical current can travel through it, the first thing we're gonna have to do is remove this rubber gasket which most ammo cans have, by the way. Sorry about the noise. So we'll get rid of the rubber gasket. Then we're gonna take a Dremel tool and we're gonna remove the paint on the inside where the gasket sat. And we're also gonna remove the paint off the top of this can. So let's get started. Before we hit the lid, with the Dremel tool, there's still some remnants of the gasket and the glue that was holding it in place. So we're gonna scrape all that off first before we hit it with the Dremel. That took a little bit longer than expected. As you can see from this pile here, there was quite a bit of adhesive inside this lid where the gasket was that had to be removed. But we got her done and we got the top of the can all cleaned off as well. So we're gonna move on to the next step. The next part of this exercise is to decide what we are going to put into our Faraday cage to protect from an EMP. So I have a few things laid out on the table here. Obviously, we've got a ham radio, uh, allows us to communicate with other people, NOAA reports, other people who've taken the uh, time to protect their stuff, I should say. Uh, way to charge it, you'll notice that we've taken the antenna off as well as the battery to reduce the potential of it being hit. We got some extra charging cables for it here, extra charging cables for other devices. Uh, 10,000 milliamp power bank with multiple ports. We have a solar powered Lucy light, which also has a USB port to charge devices. We have an X torch, which is also solar powered, has multiple lights on it, as well as it has a USB port on it on the side here to charge devices. And since the most likely source of an EMP would be a nuclear strike, as long as we're not in you know, the immediate area ground zero, um, I've decided to put a water purifier in here that's designed specifically for radiological contaminated or radioactive contaminated water and an extra life straw just to be safe. So we have a decent sized Faraday bag here that was sent to us by Offgrid. Uh, they make some really decent equipment. This one in particular is made to handle up to a full size laptop. Uh, some of the neat stuff they have, they have uh, magnets in here. So not only do you get a Velcro seal, you also get a magnetic seal as well, which is really important to provide uh, the highest level of protection. However, before we put stuff into this bag, if you look down here, you'll see that I've added an extra layer of protection to stop electricity from potentially arcing from one device to another. So we put the ham radio in a bag and then we took another big bag and we put the battery for the uh, ham radio in here, the 10,000 milliamp hour power bank and the two solar powered lights with the USB charging on them. Uh, not too worried about the charging cables and obviously not worried about our you know, water purification stuff as well. We've got tons of room in this ammo can and we'll most likely add stuff to this particular uh, can as time goes on. So as you can see, we have lots of room in this ammo can. So we've got our Faraday bag stored. We've got our water purification stored. Still a ton of room for other things. However, before we close this up, we have one more thing that we need to address. This edge where we took the paint off as well as where we took the gasket out over here is not gonna be a perfectly flat surface. So something needs to be done to accommodate the unevenness of these surfaces. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put some aluminum foil tape over top of this edge, put the lid on, close it, and then we're gonna wrap it in aluminum foil tape around the outside 
there are gaskets that you can buy material that is conductive that's metal you could use that instead uh, however we're going to use the foil tape because that's what we have also before we close this up we're going to put a list of materials items inside the can as well as outside of the can because we have multiple things you know stashed different caches and whatnot impossible to remember where everything is and we've got you know good notes but it's better to have a note right on this particular storage container so that whoever opens it up or before they open it up knows exactly what's inside so before we close up this faraday cage i want to show you all a quick test so as you can see we have a ham radio here tuned into the noaa for the weather forecast i'm going to bring this rf detector over towards it and you'll see that it starts to pick up the RF from the radio when it's hovering within uh, close range. I have the sensitivity turned way down on this because believe it or not, and I've taken my watch off, that thing will even pick up my watch. However, we're gonna put the ham radio deep in the bag. You can see that it already cut off the RF. Obviously that wouldn't be an EMT protection. We'll close it up and we'll bring our RF back we'll even touch it and as you can see or here I should say uh, doesn't pick it up at all I've seen some videos where people have claimed that this is proof that the Faraday bag is doing its job and that your stuff is protected by an EMP it does not prove that all it proves is that it shut down a very uh, low strength particular frequency of radio so you know something in the 162 megahertz range not terribly powerful. So what a Faraday bag can do in that case is hide your device from the network and give you some privacy. But when you see somebody testing RFs like we did with this device, that does not mean you're protected from an EMP. So we're gonna get this thing uh, prepared and get it closed up and give you some final instructions. So here's a quick look at how we put some aluminum foil tape around the top lip of the ammo can. Now that we have a layer of aluminum tape around the top, we're gonna to put our list of items inside and we're gonna put our lid on. And before we clamp it down, there are six clamps on this. It's got a lot of uh, compression to it as well, especially with that small layer of aluminum foil. We're gonna put another uh, piece of aluminum foil tape all the way around the edges before we clamp it down to make sure that we have a really good seal. So as you can see, I'm not particularly gifted when it comes to wrapping stuff. I don't know, maybe it's uh, just a guy thing. Regardless, we have a good seal all the way around. Uh, this style of Faraday cage uh, should well exceed negative uh, 120 decibels of suppression, which theoretically uh, would protect your devices from uh, the most powerful uh, nuclear explosion. Again, granted, you're not at ground zero where everything's completely obliterated. If you don't want to spend the money on Faraday bags, you can wrap your stuff in aluminum foil, uh, seal the seams with aluminum foil tape, and save a chunk of money. So in this particular case, we have about $100 invested between what the bag would cost uh, from off-grid and the, the little bit of other materials that we used. However, again, you, you can eliminate about $90 of that if you do your Faraday bags out of aluminum and everything 100% homemade. And uh, theoretically, it actually probably has a little bit more suppression than what cloth Faraday bags have. So we got one more thing to do to this. We're gonna put an envelope on here with a list of all the contents. Won't bore you with that during the video, but we'll give you one more tip. We're going to take this and we're going to set it in our shop on a rubber mat and that will, uh, you know, essentially isolate this device from something, you know, coming through it and trying to ground out sort of thing. So that's it for uh, this little DIY, um, building your own Faraday cage. I'm going to put some notes down in the description. It's going to give you step by step some of the things we did as well as some alternative things that you could do. Appreciate you tuning in to Survival Dispatch DIY. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, notify, all that good stuff. Helps us a lot with the algorithm, and we appreciate it. Dang it, I was wrong. That isn't the end of the video. Now it's the end of the video. We've got our compression clamps closed all the way around the box. 
nice, tight, secure fit between the lid and the Faraday cage. We're good to go.